have been located. It's still an active shooter situation. That doesn't mean that there is an active shooter still on the ground, but it does mean that there's suspicion. It's believed at this hour, and it's been confirmed to ABC News by state police there in Connecticut, that two shooters were initially believed involved in the mass shooting. Oh, oh my God. Darryl. A volley of gunshots in the night, carnage mounting inside the injured on the ground outside. Jonathan, tell me what it is that happened. Um, supposedly I heard about a couple of people got shot about seven or so. One person was supposedly dead, what I've heard. When gunfire erupted this afternoon, this deadly mass shooting happened in Parkland, Florida, about 20 miles northwest of Fort Lauderdale at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. He joins us now from Parkland, Florida. Uh, Randy, uh, talk to me about the latest that, that we know about what happened. Anderson, I can tell you that for sure it was an afternoon filled with terror for so many. Uh, any other day, this affluent community outside Fort Lauderdale would be considered one of the safest in the state of Florida. But today, as you know, a shooter changed all of that. A sheriff late this evening here told us that the shooting began outside the building and then entered inside the high school building. Uh, that is what we're told, that the shooter actually followed the students inside. And tonight, Anderson, investigators have the gruesome task of going through that high school building and identifying the victim. Well, let me just follow up and say, in terms of this man who didn't enter the building, this mm -hmm. was a failure of epic proportions at all levels of government, from the 39 reports about this young man to the calls to the FBI that weren't followed up on, to this officer standing out for four minutes while people were being slaughtered inside. Mm -hmm. This was a failure of epic proportions on all levels of the government. And in terms of a public health approach, which is what I advocate, mm -hmm. the, the liberal argument that we need to deal with gun control has failed dramatically. What we need to do is talk about this as a public health crisis, the same way we did when automobiles came out and we had to deal with safety issues there. And when mm -hmm. you do that, you can get to the point that Keisha's talking about in terms of making solid moves forward from a public yeah. policy. They have to be in the system if they are convicted. You can convict them, you can adjudicate them mentally unfit, if a state does not report it to the National Crime Information Center, when you run that form, this individual passed, this madman passed a background check. How was he able to pass a background check? Be he was able to pass a background check because we have a system that's flawed. The Sutherland Springs murderer was able to pass a background check because the Air Force did not report that record. I think that the right to bear arms is one of the markers of a of a free society. I don't think it's reasonable that only the police and the army should be allowed to be dangerous. Um, having said that, um, it seems to me that mostly what happens after these mass shootings is that the event gets absolutely politicized and people take their standard positions and there's no moving either side and, and that's too bad. I think that it's unfortunate to use an event like the Las Vegas event or the Columbine shootings to make political capital and I think that's usually what happens and so I'm not going to do that. I think it's an important right. I believe that the individual should be allowed or even encouraged to be dangerous but controlled, you know. So along with that right is a responsibility. 